Hello, my name is Tobel. Thank you for joining me for another tutorial video for X4 Foundations. I'm going to be discussing how to build your own ships on this episode. I'm going to open up the map and take a look at a couple things here. Uh, ship building is obviously a huge part of the X universe and the X4 game. You want to have your own fleet, you want to be able to uh, build your own combat ships, your own trade ships, but you need to know how to order the ships in the first place. Well, we're going to do that today. Before I begin too much, there's a couple things you need to know. One thing is that there are four separate sizes of ships, small, medium, large, extra large. The small and medium ships are purchased and ordered at the wharf. The large and extra large ships are purchased at the shipyard. The second thing you need to know is you can do this with any of the different factions in the game. The symbols remain the same, so they're always a wharf or they're always a shipyard. However, the ships that those stations can build are always just a little bit different. So the Paranid, for example, and actually there's two Paranid factions here. So this Paranid faction has different ships than this Paranid faction. The Talati have different ships as well, and of course the Argon Federation and the, the humans in general have different ships. What I'm going to do today is just go through the steps to order a pretty cheap little explorer ship. Let's go ahead and click on the wharf, and I'm going to click on Buy Ships. This is the first thing you see, a, black, a blank screen. I'm going to pick Size of Small from the drop-down. This is going to free up a couple options. Now, there are some important things to note here. I have already done some missions with the Argon Federation, and so I have unlocked a couple of restricted ships. You have to have a military federation, excuse me, a federation military ship license in order to order these two Argon ships, the Eclipse and the Quasar. Since I've already done my missions and I've kind of ranked up with the federation, I have these as an option. You may have these as just red text, and that's fine. If you want to get these ships, all you have to do is get your faction level, I believe it was to 10, with whatever uh, faction you want, get your relationship to 10, and then they'll have a mission where you can unlock this. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and just pick a basic ship. Let's look at the Discovery Vanguard. By default, this ship costs 91k, and we see that all it comes with right now is a chassis. And in fact, the information down here on, in red is telling us that it needs more things to get out the door. Right? You can't have a ship without any engines, it's just going to be a lovely place to walk in and look at. So the game also helps you by telling you that these tabs are red, indicating you need something from each of these sections before it will be able to be pur uh, to purchased and uh, created. So we're going to look at the engines first. Uh, I want this to be a quick little scout ship. So I'm going to drop the Travel Mark 1 engine on here. You can see the information has been changed. And this actually continues as you build your ship. So I've just added the engines, but you notice that we have no yaw, pitch, roll, and ratings. I'm going to go down to thrusters and add an all-around thruster, and suddenly we have those values. So it continues to show you your overall ship based on whatever you have chosen. So if you noticed, I clicked on this once, I clicked on the all-around thruster once, and these are now added to our, think of this as your Amazon shopping cart, right? So everything is there, you haven't clicked confirm yet, you're just still kind of browsing and adding things to your list. So every time you click, something gets changed. All right, so we've added a couple of things. These are still red, so we're going to go down and add the prerequisite items to the ship. Just the basic levels of these couple pieces of software. And we're also, because this ship is not going to be piloted by us, we're going to include a pilot. So right now our ship is sitting at a 163,000 credit cost. All right, and just for fun, because I want to show you the difference between the different species. I'm going to look at the values of the travel engines because a lot of you probably want to make a scout ship. And one of the big things about scouting, you have to spend a ton of time going from point A to point B. So right now the travel speed value is 4.2 KMS, so 4,000 meters a second. If we do the highest level engine, we're looking at 5.7 K per second. So it's a little bit faster and it'll get us across the system fast when we're using the travel mode, which is Shift-1. You can see the price tag has also gone up to 477k. Let's remember that number. So 477k. If we wanted to order this ship right now, we could add it to the shopping list, and then we would have kind of a confirmation screen, and we'd be able to order the ship. But what I want to do real quick is back out, 
and take a look at, let's go down here to one of the other species or one of the other factions, wharfs. I want to compare the ships. So we were at about 5.7 meters per second on that scout. So I'm going to pick the Pegasus here, which is one of the parented ships, and I'm going to add a travel engine just to see how fast it is. And it's almost 3,000 meters per second faster than the Argon ship was. Let's add a couple more items here. Try to keep the price, or rather the items, roughly the same, and we'll check the overall price difference. And as you can see, the overall price here is much higher than the Argon ship. So different species are going to have different options, and of course the, corris uh, the corresponding cost may go up. So this has a higher rated engine, however the cost is a little bit higher. Just wanted to show you that because this is actually a ship that I want to build here in a bit. I have enough money for it, well, I don't because my trader just happened to steal all my money. But that's fine, he should be finished up by the time we're ready to buy. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and go back to our wharf and rebuild that ship. And the one last thing I wanted to show you before we order the ship, back to size, back to, let's do this little uh, vanguard. Well, this is actually a courier ship, well, that's interesting. Better haul perhaps? A little more expensive, more value there. So the other thing I wanted to show you is the loadouts. Loadouts come, uh, this is actually a custom loadout. I've made this already because I have a Discover Vanguard that I built. But each ship comes with four presets. Minimum, we'll put the minimum items needed to get this ship out the door. It added engines, thrusters, and your prerequisite pieces of software, as well as checking off the pilot. Each of these loadouts has an increased version that costs more, but has better equipment, better quality, and of course also a, bitter, a, a bigger price. 363k credits, 739 credits, and 1.5 million credits, finally. This is basically the best of everything possible. Do you really need this on a Discover Vanguard? Probably not. You want to look at your ships and figure out what is the, what is the objective of your ship. What do you want it to do really, really well? Hey, if it's your combat ship, then yeah, absolutely. Maybe you do want to go high preset and get everything the best possible. This just happened to be a heavy fighter that's going to cost you 2 million credits. That's almost enough to buy yourself one full trader at large size. So let's go back to the Discover. And I'm going to put some basic stuff here. Travel Mark 1, all around thrusters. Let's check off each of these scanner pieces of software and the pilot box. And now we're going to go ahead and add to shopping list. And there you'll see our Vanguard and everything that's already been added to it ready to go. If you want to buy more than one, you can check the box plus or minus if in case you design a ship that you want to buy a couple times. We're going to go down here to confirm order. And bam, we're done. And if we zoom in here, uh, we can see our ship is actually being built. Sometimes the construction timer will take a little bit longer if the station is short on materials. And offhand, I believe it comes up here if it tells you that it's short of materials. Don't quote me on that, I have seen it before where one particular station said, hey, we don't have enough materials, it's going to take a minute. So be aware that if you're building a very large ship and you're super impatient for it to come out, you might have to wait a little bit longer. So that's the very, very basics of building your own ships. If you want to take a look and explore, I would, you know, it doesn't hurt to just go ahead and buy ship and take a look at some of the options we have in the different areas. Uh, it seems that the uh, the Argon Federation don't trust me quite enough to give me a destroyer yet. That's fine. That's fine. I don't judge them for that. But you can, in fact, look for some of the other ships. If you're familiar with Eve, this looks like an Iteron 5, but it looks like it's the uh, Incart Katura Vanguard. I think I pronounced that perhaps close. And it starts at a cool 3.1 million. So if you are pondering starting your own trading fleet, I would recommend buying some medium-sized freighters or vanguards. And really the Mercury, because if we look at this, 180,000 credits for 7,400. And 8,200 with 180 again. Same price, but a little bit more storage. Personally, I recommend the Mercuries. I think they're a pretty standard all-around ship. And they'll get you where you need to go. Yeah, the other thing, I think a, one last thing I want to include here is the fact that the service crew is kind of important on some of these bigger ships. I believe the service crew for sure repairs the ship. 
I believe personally that it also increases or reduces the time it takes to load and unload wares once you get to a station. So uh, it could be a thing to test, but I don't think it hurts to have service crew. They don't cost a ton of money. I guess that actually is a ton when it's almost the same value of the ship. But hey, uh, everyone needs uh, deployable or, or uh, red shirts, right? Everyone needs a few red shirts on their ship. So there we go. That's, in a nutshell, how to build your own ships. I would like to discuss later on how to make some fleets, and we'll go from there at a different video. I do hope this has been informative for you, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.